In the book, Revised Common Lectionary Prayers, we find these words. O God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all your children may be drawn into your bountiful dwelling. Amen. We come to another of these in-between times, having celebrated for 40 days the resurrection of Christ, anticipating on the 50th day the gift of Pentecost. We now meet in this Sunday between. We follow the timetable that Luke sets out in his Gospel and in the book of Acts. 40 days after rising from the grave, Jesus spent that time meeting with his friends, his disciples, talking with them, eating with them, teaching them. And then on this past Thursday, the 40th day, ascended into heaven bodily. We look every Sunday at the great east window behind me here, behind the altar. I hope we all see that every Sunday. I wonder how often we really look at it. It is a window which illustrates the passage in the book of Acts, which we just heard read a few minutes ago. Jesus and the disciples gathered at Bethany outside Jerusalem. Jesus offering a blessing to his followers. Notice his hands, his right hand raised to receive the gift of God and his left hand lowered to convey it to his followers. Notice the 11 apostles, which there would have been at that time, artfully arranged in their best Sunday clothes, sitting, kneeling, bowing, gazing upward, watching the miracle as the heavens open, the clouds part, and the glory of God is revealed and Jesus is gathered into it. It's very hard to read, but it does include the verse from Acts 1, where the two men dressed in white address the apostles, saying, Men of Galilee, why are you standing here looking into heaven? This Jesus, who you see going into heaven, will return in the same way that he came. We gather every Sunday for worship in the light of this scene. And at the same time, I wonder almost every Sunday what I think <laughs> about that. What do I think that could mean for us, for me, for all of us? Whatever ascension means, I think it probably does not mean a trip into outer space. I think it probably does not mean a literal climb into heaven whatever heaven may be. How I make sense of this for myself is this. It is an ascension into heaven. But what is heaven? Heaven is, I believe, the presence of God. In heaven, being in heaven is being in that direct relationship with God, to see God face to face. And where is God? Where is that place where we encounter God? Christians have taught for 2,000 years that God is everywhere. That God is everywhere in every one. So to enter into heaven for Jesus was to enter into the whole world in all its fullness. As we sang earlier, no longer bound to distant days in Palestine, but here now, in us, among us, around us, above us, beneath us, all around us, wherever human people can go, God is there. And where we have not gone yet, God is still there too. To enter into that glory is to enter into the fullness of God's intention for each 
person and for all and for every living being and for every world that was created through the living word of God. To enter into heaven is to experience that spirit of God which brooded over the waters at creation and which in a few short days we will recall being poured out in fire and wind and sacred speech among Jesus' followers. For Jesus to enter into heaven is to become fully and freely available to all of us and to each of us, whoever we are and wherever we are. Heaven, then, is a place that we can encounter in our own time, in our own day, because God is everywhere present and God is with us. Julian of Norwich, one of our Anglican forebearers, in her cell attached to the church at Norwich, where she received visions from God, which she wrote and shared with all her friends and with us in this later time. In one of her visions, she wrote this, as truly as God is our father, so truly is God our mother. And he revealed that in everything, and especially in these sweet words where he says, I am the one. That is to say, I am the one, the power and goodness of fatherhood. I am the one, the wisdom and loving kindness of motherhood. I am the one, the light and grace, which is all blessed love. I am the one, the trinity. I am the one, the unity. I am the one, the great supreme goodness of every kind of thing. I am the one who makes you to love. I am the one who makes you to long. I am the one, the endless fulfilling of all true desire. Jesus prayed for his followers that they might experience that desire, that they might experience that longing, that they might experience that love that draws you out of yourself into union and communion with God in the world, in your fellow human beings. Jesus prayed that we might experience the glory of God in our unity and community with one another, as family, as friends, as mothers and fathers, as sisters and brothers, as children and parents, as neighbors and co-workers, as lovers and spouses. We are drawn out of ourselves into union with God who is everywhere and at all times present. While the ascension looks like a going away, it is really a coming to. It is leaving one place in order to be available everywhere. We share in that ascension of Christ by faith. St. Augustine wrote, we cannot be in heaven as he is on earth by divinity, but in him we can be there by love. Ivan M. Granger wrote, we don't float to heaven. Like a tree, we sink roots deep into the rocky soil, and so year by year, reach higher into the heavens. Here, in this place, in this time, in this community, in this congregation, in these families, in these neighborhoods, in these towns and cities that are represented in this space. Let us allow our roots to grow deeper and deeper into the good creation that God brought to being in love. And let us allow ourselves to grow in love, 
to spread in love, to rise in love, and let ourselves, in this way, enter into heaven. Augustine said, we cannot ascend, we cannot be present in heaven as he is on earth by divinity, but we can be present with him in love. Amen. <laughs>